Welcome back to another installment of the Debian series, Life with Linux on the PlayStation 2. Now, in the last video, we fixed up the apt-get issues and managed to download some updates and made sure that we can uh, move on with this video. And in the last few months, I've been a little bit tied up with the uh, PlayStation 1 Runix distribution or what will eventually become the Black Roo Linux distribution for the PlayStation 1 uh, which is in my other videos but today I wanted to take a break from that uh, I, was, I was banging my head on the desk literally uh, with that sort of stuff as you can see here um, so today's video we are going to set up Debian on this PlayStation 2 as a server one issue I've been facing recently was my old EasyCap DC60 USB capture device which I've had since I've owned my Power Mac G5 which is years ago keeps crashing my current Intel Mac system and I figured if I install an SSH server onto it this will um, help me until I can get a new capture device. This way we can set up additional users and SSH into them from my main machines and we can probably push this machine a little bit harder, have a few more things running from different users. I'm going to install the NTP clock server uh, just to make sure everything stays synced. Now this is a really old system so I don't know how well this is going to go with SSL and everything else but this is a start just to make sure we stay synced. Awesome, that's all installed now and that'll keep our network clock running pretty well. Uh, let's move on to getting the server all set up and we'll install MySQL for a database and we'll use Courier to handle the mail and all those other things and we're going to need to modify the host list here and download all these packages uh, and I'll even leave a link in the description in case you want to but that all depends if I remember by the end of this video or not. <laughs> um, but this is the basic setup you're going to need for your host list file here um, and if I get this going pretty well I might even host this myself so other people can download this version of uh, my Debian setup here as a server just so you can get one sort of running yourself or even just follow along with this video you're more than welcome to um, but I'll make it available if I remember if not you just have to leave a comment and the comment section obviously to remind me that I uh, didn't do it but um, so let's get this set up here I'm going to set up a local IP address here with a myserver.example.com uh, as I don't have a real domain name for this but just for the purpose of setting the server up well um, that'll be enough to get this going so let's get this happening So if you're fast enough to notice the lib SAS L12-2 is actually a 1-2 on here. So make sure it's an L2 because um, I made a mistake and I missed the S. And so we're into the setup now of the SQL server. So basically I'm not going to make any drastic changes here to the root user or password or anything like that. I'm going to leave everything blank um, for the sake of security you would want to have a real root password but I mean this machine is a PlayStation 2 with zero risk of security like no, no one's going to be using this I'm not going to be hosting any banking websites on it but so just follow me along here through this setup process uh, if you like and you'll be able to get your own one going So I mean, for those who aren't familiar with, say, SASL, it's basically like a security sort of API layer communication sort of uh, program library or API, if you want to call it, that needs to be installed for this uh, server to happen. And we'll install things like um, 
Apache and obviously SQL and uh, a couple of other elements in there. Um, we'll get that on here. And like, I have no idea if this is actually going to hold up on the system because I mean, the Debian 2.6 kernel does take up a lot of the resources on this machine and while I'm installing, um, we'll even go from my capture card here to my terminals on my Mac and we'll actually monitor using top to see um, how much resources or how many resources are being uh, used or occupied during this setup. Okay, so while that was doing its thing, I thought we might as well go back into um, adding a user from my root account and we'll add a guest user and I'll add another user called admin that way I can SSH um, and through like two terminals and we can get other things happening while the root user is doing its thing um, so we'll, we'll set those up and one of the problems I ran into is I had installed sudo as well so for us to make any changes as one of these other users as root obviously you need sudo privileges so we had to go into sudo as, as well and edit those, or that file, and um, then I'll move over from this capture card device to um, terminals. And voila, look at the difference in quality there straight away. So I mean obviously on the right hand side is my capture device logged in as root. So we can still do a whole bunch of uh, root privileged tasks on that side. And then we've got the guest user on the left hand side running top. I was just checking it out to see what kind of um, resources were being consumed and um, it's pretty cool because like we've got the color modes back in this sort of terminal on the left and um, the quality is like crystal clear so I'll probably roll with this from now on I think even with my capture device uh, on its way I have bought a new one um, I might even just use terminals just so it's a bit clearer but it kind of looks kind of nostalgic to have it running from a composite video output and eventually I will get myself a sync on green monitor so I can really sort of up the res and we'll, I, I'd love to get something else installed on here like a, a user interface I just I don't think this will have the um, ability to do that once we have this running as a server so I mean I do have another Debian installation on this drive so we can always experiment with that on another one but I also do have another PlayStation too so um, perhaps this is where we're going to start diverging off into multiple machines where we have black rhino and then we've got our debian server and then we've got our um you know everyday use debian system and then possibly another one for uh, gen 2 up the road having the ability to have more than one user is really really cool so i thought i'd expand my dead seas game which is a real-time strategy game that I've been developing for DOS, Windows and uh, Linux obviously and I thought how cool would it be to have this game on Debian on the uh, PlayStation 2 and I've been working on this since about oh, say COVID 2019, 2018 sort of around those sort of days just slowly here and there but I was trying to expand it here using gzip and that didn't want to work and then I thought fuck I need to use sudo and then sudo wasn't working and so I thought, well, if I download Unzip, that's probably going to be a good start because that's the right uh, program anyway. And then I installed that. And then on the uh, guest user on the left-hand side there, uh, it couldn't find the Unzip program after I had um, installed it. So I realized I'm going to have to log out and log back in. Uh, hopefully that helps, or I can just do it from the um, root user on the right-hand side. So one of the issues I was starting to face here though is um, I realized that when I downloaded this off my file server I used wget and there must have been a bit of an issue when I downloaded it so I might have to just put it on a USB stick and do it that way but we might come back to um, building dead seas at a later date.
trouble now with my admin. Luckily, I know the bloke, so it shouldn't be too much of a, a hassle. But um, let's let's go in and let's nano the sudo as file here. And you see here on the right hand side, we've got the root users there with all the privileges in the world, as you'd expect. But like, let's let's add our um, guest user in, in there, and um, later on I'll add my admin user once I've done that, and that'll get us rolling, and that should take a bit more stress off the whole pseudo situation. Well, that's going to do it for episode 7, unfortunately. We're starting to run out of time here. I tried to cut this down as best as I could, but uh, these things seem to drag on. So stay tuned for the next episode, guys. We will continue setting up the SSL and the Apache server. And I've already edited the video, so um, it shouldn't be too far away. So on the next one.